Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I hope you all are doing well and fine. And also, I hope you have followed your classes because we are we are nearly finishing uh, our syllabus. So, in our last class, we have discussed about uh, global production, and today we'll discuss about supply chain. Uh, we have discussed many cases why companies nowadays they are producing some part of their product in one country and some in other uh, in some parts uh, in assemble in third countries nowadays you see Nike they don't have any production side they have been producing their product in Vietnam in China in India in Bangladesh in other countries uh, same for other products uh, iPhone uh, designed in California produced and assembled in China car automobile industries they are having a partnership strategic alliance with our other companies uh, that they are producing certain products uh, in other countries so while producing products in other country there are certain benefits and advantages and disadvantages as well producing in home country uh, there are many advantages you are supporting your own uh, economics you're uh, paving the ground for employment uh, you are providing employment opportunity you pay tax to the country uh, you support the economic development of a country where you are uh, headquartered located and uh, also but there is certain disadvantage as well the local economy might be low labor wage might be higher compared to other countries the tax rate might be higher compared to other countries F availability of resources like raw material might be not easy uh, labor skill labor you might be facing problem with the skill labor you cannot operate in your own country or the country you are located your headquarter is located so these are cer certain challenges that the companies are uh, willing to move abroad and try to uh, produce their product in different parts of the world uh, so there are certain uh, advantages uh, which we have discussed in disadvantages as well so nowadays companies they are mostly concentrating on uh, generating more profit uh, they are trying to connect with different suppliers in different countries so they can just uh, produce the quality product uh, at a lower price so today we will be discussing uh, shall we make uh, the product or buy from others uh, how the global uh, transportation and inventory system works uh, supply chain how the global supply chain works so today we will discuss all this issue in full detail so you can have a, a clear idea regarding the supplying global production uh, because it's a part of international business uh, so we know we have discussed globalization we have discussed cultural issues we have discussed mm, theories we have discussed global human resource management we have discussed all these topics these are the most important topics because if you are working in an organization and you are dealing in international business it's very very important for you to uh, be aware of these uh, topics uh, and you can practically work for it uh, so that's why uh, these topics are uh, the most important topics uh, so it will help you a lot in your business field in your uh, when you are doing the business or when you are working for some other company so today we will discuss all these issues uh, in full detail so we can understand uh, what is so now international business that's the most uh, frequent let me take here that's the most come on that's the most frequent questions uh, uh, like day-to-day -day questions people uh, international business they ask shall we make our product or buy product shall we have our own factory or shall we have a contract with the third party shall we make our product uh, in our home country or shall we make it in uh, abroad shall we 
make our product buy our product from one supplier or two supplier or more suppliers so these are questions uh, which will be asked in most of the businesses they are uh, having their own policy they are having their own policy where to make products uh, all has its own advantages and disadvantages as well buying from one supplier or two supplier or more suppliers so there are different uh, questions which uh, needs to be asked uh, many companies that they are having they are involved in international uh, market they buy products certain they make products so all has its own strategic goals and objectives so that's why they are making their own strategy they are following their own strategic uh, policies so international business frequently face make or buy a decision decision about whether they should perform a certain value creation activity themselves or outsource it to another entity historically most outsourcing decision have involved the manufacturer of physical product most manufacturing firms have done their own final assembly but have had to decide whether to vertically integrate and manufacture their own component parts or outsource the products of such parts purchasing them from independent supplier <coughs> sorry so they are thinking about parts of the product being uh, produced by uh, other suppliers by independent suppliers they can just do the assembly or even the assembly was done uh, might be done by another company so that's why it's now uh, mostly involved in global market these days such make or buy decision are an important aspect of strategy of many firm in the automobile industry for example the typical car contain more than 10,000 components so automobile fair firm can consistently face make or buy decision so you see one car got around 10,000 components so what the factories think that okay shall we make all these 10,000 factory uh, components or shall we make some part of it and give this some for example shall we make 9,000 in 1,000 or produced by other uh, suppliers or shall we make just a uh, few thousands and remaining needs to be contracted with the independent suppliers or shall we make all of them and they or they might think okay we don't want to produce any components we just want to assemble it so you see one car got this much component so it's a lot uh, to compare the phone in the phone you find screen chip motherboard uh, cover everything so how how they will produce it so Toyota produced less than 30 percent of the value of the car that roll off its assembly line so imagine 30 percent so 3,000 are produced by Toyota 7,000 are produced by other uh, companies the remaining 70 percent mainly accounted for by component parts and complex sub assemblies come from independent suppliers so imagine from 10,000 3,000 are produced by Toyota itself remaining 7,000 they have decided to uh, contract or they have decided to deal with uh, independent suppliers from outside they have decided to produce by others not by themselves so they all have as I said in the beginning they all has its own advantages and disadvantages so it belongs to the strategy of the company shall we produce all our product or shall we buy from uh, independent suppliers so these are the questions so if you are making your own product then definitely you need a plant you need machinery you need stuff you need to control you need expense but uh, if you are contracting with another supplier then you don't need all these things you just uh, place an order and they can produce it everything belongs to them that's uh, electricity bills expenses inventory for example uh, factory machinery stuff everything belongs to the supplier you just order something for example you need tires yes so you don't need to produce tire you go to another company and you ask them to produce tire for Toyota you need car wheel so you don't produce wheel for yourself you car you contract a, with a company that produce wheel for Toyota you 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 need glasses for example 
for your car. Toyota need glass, so it's a mirror in glass, so they contract with another company to produce glass in these seats. Toyota needs seats, they can't produce it, they contract with another supplier that they need to produce seats for uh, for the Toyota. I, I same thing with the uh, different covers, uh, different uh, components of cars, lighting, uh, GPS system, for example, latest fingerprint systems or other security systems might be produced by another company. So these are components which needs to be produced by uh, automobile independent suppliers. So every company think that think about their uh, own profit. So you see the remaining 70% mainly accounted for by component parts and complex assemblies comes from uh, sub assemblies come from independent supply in the athletic shoe industry the make or buy issue has been taken to an extreme with companies such as Nike and Reebok having no involvement uh, involvement in manufacturing so all production has been outsourced prim primarily to manufacture based in low wage countries so you see Reebok and Nike they don't have anything in manufacturing they just have independent suppliers and they produce products that's it so they don't just follow they just order a company they just go to a company where they have a country where they are having low wage for example China, Vietnam, Thailand in these countries then they order products from there Taiwan in these uh, other countries as well so so they order products they don't uh, produce by themselves because they believe that they it might be uh, beneficial for them it might be more profitable that they just design the product and they sell it, send it to India for example. Certain products are produced in India, certain products are produced in Vietnam, certain products are produced in Bangladesh uh, where the uh, labor wage is cheaper. Mostly their shoes are produced in China and Vietnam. Their shirt, t-shirts and textiles are produced in uh, Bangladesh and other countries. Uh, so that's why you see these countries uh, are producing products in different parts of the globe. So in recent years the outsourcing decision has gone beyond the manufacturing as we have discussed of physical product to embrace the production of service activity. For example, many US based company from credit card issuer to computer companies have outsourced their customer call centers to India so you see there is low labor wages cheaper they, they reduce their cost everything so they have transferred their call center to India there are many call center in located in India nowadays so if you are calling in USA for a company it, your call goes to India so they solve your issues in your problems so the why they have chosen India availability of resources uh, so they have chosen India in order to for their call center why because there are many IT experts their uh, technology they are having the technology, they are having low labor wage, many people graduate from IT special uh, zones, special uh, faculties. So that's why they have moved to India. They are buying the customer call center function while making other parts of the product in-house. Similarly, many information technology companies have been outsourcing some parts of the software development process such as testing computer code written in the United States to independent uh, provider based in India so such companies are making writing most of the code in-house but buying or outsourcing part of the production process testing to independent companies India is often the focus of such our outsourcing because English is widely spoken there the nation has a well-educated workforce particularly in engineering field and they pay uh, the pay is much lower than the in the United States, a call center 
working in India earn about 200 to 300 a month, about one tenth of the, compa of the comparable to the US. Uh, so imagine in United States in a month you need to pay around 2000 to 3000 dollar, but in India they pay the same uh, uh, worker just 200 to 300 dollars so they are saving thousands of dollars uh, each month from uh, employees and also early they are saving a lot of money so on early basis you see that they are uh, saving a lot of money so you saw that the, these companies have moved their call center some components to India so that's why if you are working in an organization and they are producing certain products in another country you need to be very very uh, well aware of tax system you need to be aware, well, uh, aware of wages everything because if China for example if you are producing something in China and China become expensive new tax system lo high lower wage then definitely you need to move your uh, supplier from China to another country you need to contract another maybe India slowly Bangladesh Thailand Vietnam Bang Singapore and Malaysia and these companies so you need to be always as I've said international business is a subject where you need to update yourself on daily basis so you need to be uh, well aware of the tax system, what's happening, the global uh, pandemic, the process, the problems faced, economic situation, political situation of the country, everything. You need to be well aware of these factors. So the next topic is strategic alliance with supplier. The uh, most companies nowadays they are uh, coming with uh, they are de dealing with strategic alliance. So what they do they come uh, they make a strategic uh, partnership with certain countries, so certain companies. Like for example, one company is uh, building or manufacturing one product, another is pro manufacturing another product. So for their mutual benefits, uh, they believe that if we work as a partners like like a partners or as a uh, alliance with each other then uh, we might have more profitability and the quality might uh, increase as well and also we can uh, satisfy our customers so nowadays mostly businesses are dealing in strategic uh, alliances uh, so if you think that uh, strategic alliances is beneficial for both of you for your company and another company then definitely you can have that several international businesses have tried to reap some benefits of vertical integration without the associated organizational problem by entering strategic alliances with essential supplier for example there was an alliance between Kodak and Canon so imagine both produce the same thing under which Canon built photocopier for sale by Kodak an alliance between Microsoft and Flextronic under which Flextronic built the Xbox for Microsoft and an alliance between Boeing and several Japanese company to build its jet aircraft including the 787 by these alliances Kodak Microsoft and Boeing have committed themselves to long-term relationship with these suppliers which have encouraged the suppliers to undertake specialized investment strategic alliance build trust between the firms and its supplier Trust is built when a firm makes a credible commitment to continue purchasing from a supplier on a reasonable term. For example, the firm may invest money in supplier perhaps by taking uh, a minority shareholding to sing signal its intention to build a productive, mutually beneficial, long-term relationship. So that's all what we have discussed. So the companies come together for their mutual benefits. So if the strategic uh, alliance is, is in the benefit of both companies, they come together for certain uh, products. They come together to produce certain uh, products together and they want to uh, definitely they save cost and they want to increase their quality. So they come together in producing these products. So this kind of arrangement between the firm and its spot supplier was partnered in Japan by large auto companies such as Toyota. Uh, 
many Japanese automakers have cooperative relationship with their supplier that go back decades. In these relationship, the auto companies and their suppliers collaborated collaborate on ways to increase value added by, for example, impl implementing just-in-time inventory system or cooperating in the design of the component parts to improve quality and reduce assembly cost. These relationships have been formalized when the auto firms acquired minority shareholding in many of their essential uh, many of their essential suppliers to symbolize their desires for long-term cooperative relationship with them. So you see that these companies have uh, come together. They came together in order to uh, produce and decades from the last 10, 20, 30 years. Japanese firms are cooperating with each other in order to have a quality, improve their quality and reduce assembly cost. So they come together, they're producing some certain part, they're getting strategic alliance with each other for their mutual benefit. At the same time, the relationship between the firm in each essential supplier remains market mediated and uh, time enable if the supplier fails to perform by pursuing such a strategy. The Japanese uh, automaker capture many of the benefits of vertical integration, particularly those arising from investment in specialized assets without suffering the organizational problems that come with formal uh, vertical integration. The part suppliers also benefit from these relationships because they grow with the firm that they supply and share its success. So you see that most suppliers, if Toyota is uh, successful, definitely suppliers are making good money as well. Because if Toyota is selling 100,000 cars per month, definitely supplier needs to produce more. So if the sale of Toyota redu go down, decrease, then definitely the suppliers will decrease their uh, products as well. So they will not buy more product from the supplier. So it's a mutual benefit. So as I have said, it's a mutual uh, understanding between different companies if it's beneficial for you for your company to be have a strategic alliance with your supplier or other companies then definitely uh, you need to go for it because you think it's a mutual benefit you can improve the quality and you can increase the pro uh, effectiveness of your product and you can increase the uh, satisfaction rate of your uh, customers now managing a global chain uh, supply chain so nowadays you see you are buying a product uh, let's say you are having phone in your hand so it was for example if you are having iphone design in california built in china and now you are having with yourself in afghanistan so how this global chain management works how they they can uh, they transfer the product transport from one country to another you're buying perfumes made from Paris, you're buying for example uh, let's say olive came from Spain, you're buying uh, dairy products for example came from Turkey, you buy cream spray and these things came from for example India so these are how these has been uh, typically uh, supplied from one country to another that's a very very important nowadays if you see that most of the countries are um, companies are trying to uh, what we call uh, send their product for their customer at the right time for example you are in the United States you order a product from a company in Bangladesh so definitely they give you for example 10 days or 5 days or 2 days or 3 days then definitely they must send that product for you in 10 days or in the, the time that has been given so how they manage these things uh, recently because of the improvement in technology improvement in uh, global transportation system it's it, it made it very easier to buy a product from one country and transport it to another country uh, these products are transported but there are certain drawbacks and problems that the companies are facing when there is a problem when there is a certain global pandemic so logistic encompasses the activities necessary to get materials from supplier to a manufacturer manufacturing facility through the manufacturing process and out through a distribution system to the end user in the international business the logistic function manage the global supply chain the twin objective of logistic are to manage a firm's global supply chain at the lowest possible cost in a way 
that best serve customer needs, thereby lowering the cost of value creation in helping the firms establish a competitive, competitive advantage through supplier customer service. The potential for reducing costs through more efficient logistic is enormous. For the typical manufacturing enterprise, material costs account for between 50 to 70 percent of revenues. So depending on industry, even a small reduction in these costs can have a substantial impact on profitability. So you see that the transportation logistic cost is, uh, if there is a, sing a small reduced in reduction in logistic costs, it has a big impact on profitability of a company because you are reducing your transportation cost. You are having a very good supplier, you are having a contract with a good logistic company that they are sending your product at the right time. So, so these are very very important which you can uh, find out that these companies are you see that count for 57 percent of revenue so it comes if you reduce your uh, transportation cost in logistics supply chain cost definitely it will have a great impact on your uh, profitability so it your profit uh, comp your profit uh, of your company will increase so that's how uh, that's global supply chain now we will discuss the role of just-in-time inventory just-in-time inventory which was uh, introduced by a Japanese uh, company in 1960 1970 uh, it has a very big role play a very key role in manufacturing firms uh, this system is basically uh, about uh, arriving your uh, material having your material uh, at the right time for example you're having a production site and you need a raw material from another country so that raw material needs to be reached to your produ production site at the right time because if you are having shortage with your raw material definitely your company will be closed for a few days so you are not having a production like similarly few days before I, w I called the Spingar oil company here in Kabul and I asked them they have any production or not they say no from last two three days we don't have any production we, our warehouse are empty so we are waiting for our raw material uh, to come to Kabul then we can start our production so imagine one day if the production site is closed you're making a lot of loss so that's why this system has helped uh, a lot this system has helped more companies in order to uh, uh, receive their product on time pointed by Japanese firm during that country's remarkable economic transformation during the 1960s in 1970s just-in-time inventory system now play a major role in most manufacturing firms the basic philosophy behind just-in-time system is to economize economize uh, on inventory holding cost by having material arrive at a manufacturing plant just in time to enter the production process and not before so definitely inventory holding if you are having a big warehouse and you're holding your inventory for a long time then definitely it increase your cost so that's why most companies nowadays they don't hold inventories just raw materials coming directly to the production site they produce in go that's it there is no place where they can in, in, uh, hold their inventory for months, two months because it increased their cost as well. So the major cost saving comes from speeding up inventory turnover. This reduces inventory holding costs such as warehousing and storage costs. In other countries you need to pay for your storage if you don't have. So definitely if you are making for example uh, every day you need a store you book a store f a storage for your company for 10 days you pay for example hundred dollar if it go for 20 day you pay two hundred dollars so it increase your cost so that's why you don't need to keep your inventory a lot with the storage room with the warehouse so that's it. that's why it helps in supply chain so this reduce uh, storage it means the company can reduce the amount of working capital it needs to finance inventory freeing capital for other use in a low or lowering the total capital requirement of the enterprise other things being equal this will boost the company profitability as a measured by a return on capital invested it also means uh, the company is less likely to have access access and unsold inventory that it has to write off against earning or price low to lower to sell 
so that's why you see that these are the advantage or firms that they are facing with the uh, issues that th the companies are having so this is the role of just in time uh, in addition to the cost benefit just in time system can also help firms improve product quality under a just in time system parts or enter the manufacturing process immediately they are not warehoused so this allowed effective input to be spotted right away so the problem can then be traced to the supply source and fixed before more defective parts are produced so you see that it don't go to warehouse so if you are producing certain things it go to the warehouse for 10 20 days that might uh, reduce that might reduce the quality that might affect the quality of your product if it goes straight to the production site it might increase the quality uh, of your uh, product so so this allowed effective inputs to be spotted right away the problems can be traced to the supply source and fixed before more defective parts are produced under a more traditional system warehousing parts for weeks before they are used uh, allows many defective parts to be produced before a problem is uh, recognized so do you see this the advantage that the company uh, is having so uh, just in time system uh, so that's why just in time now uh, play a key role so if you are uh, paying a lot of money for your warehouse you're paying a lot of money for a staff to maintain that warehouse you pay the electricity bill for that you need to have a guard for it for example a person you pay the storage mm, uh, fees everything so it it increase your cost so that's why just in time just in time production uh, so that's why these uh, companies are saving cost in order to uh, they're using this system in order to reduce their cost and reduce their uh, and increase their productivity and also the quality so certain products are perishable you cannot store it for a long time so definitely you need a, a specific supply chain uh, to reduce for example if you're having a supermarket and you need fruits to be arrive on time so you need a specific supply chain and you have a you need a company that needs to be supply your product on right time because if you're not having a product in your where in your shop in your store definitely it affect your productivity because customers are coming to buy for example a milk or for example cheese or for example fruits and they are not arrive on time so that's why these systems are working uh, I think uh, the best system uh, I think Walmart is using in uh, in United States when you're buying certain things it go through POS system like scan the supplier alert uh, alerted on time so so that's why uh, so that's why it's uh, uh, sorry so that's why most companies nowadays are uh, depending on their mm, supply chain that they want their product to reach their customer at the right time especially post especially emergency post that uh, needs to be reached there for example in 12 hour 10 hour 24 hour it's not only uh, inside the country it's globally it's not only around the, uh, what we call it uh, in the country you see that products are posted from China to all part of the world so it needs a special uh, supply chain so this is also another important part of the mm, business which you need to be very very careful for uh, and also look for it so that's another just in role in time uh, just in time inventory system that is uh, company it's uh, has its own drawback as well it's not only uh, has benefits but there are very few disadvantage of this system as well this system the disadvantage of this system is uh, availability of resource availability of product in your warehouse because if supplies go up then it's very hard to maintain that uh, because if you are having in your warehouse in your supply go up definitely you can uh, produce or you can supply your product from your own warehouse to the market secondly pandemics especially like coronavirus COVID-19 has closed many companies in China that the companies that they were dependent on regular uh, arrival of products from China 
they didn't had anything in their warehouse with their warehouse because they they were dependent on uh, real time product products came on time and they just produce uh, <coughs> sorry they just distributed and they don't have anything in their warehouse they don't have products for a certain time so because of these uh, covid-19 in coronavirus the business has had suffered a lot uh, because they couldn't uh, meet the demands of their uh, own customers because they didn't have the product with themselves. So that's why the drawback of a just-in-time system is that it leaves a firm without a buffer stock of inventory. Although buffer stock are expensive to store, they can help a firm respond quickly to increase in demand and tide a firm over shortage brought about by distur uh, disruption among supplies. Such a disruption occurred after the September 2001 attack on World Trade Center when the subsequent shutdown of international air travel and shipping left many firms that led upon globally dispersed supply and tightly managed just time supply chain with a buffer stock of without a buffer stock of inventory. So you see in 2000 attack the or, uh, international air travel was banned and there were many problems. A list pron pronounced but similar situation occurred again in 2003 when the outbreak of uh, phenomena, pneumonia like uh, uh, as a virus which helped in China shut down several plants operated by foreign companies and disrupted their uh, global supply chain. Uh, so that was another virus which hit into back in 2003. So many supply chain has faced so much problems because they couldn't uh, get their product. Similarly, in late 2004, you got import into the United States, left several major West Coast shipping ports clogged with too many ships from Asia that could not be unloaded fast enough and disrupted the finally turned supply chain of several major U.S. enterprises. So there is the same like COVID-19, which many businesses has faced so many. Uh, problem. So these are uh, the drawbacks of just in time. So it has its own advantage and disadvantages. But this is the uh, drawback or disadvantage of just in time uh, delivery. So this week we have finished in three classes: uh, uh, global production, supply chain, uh, and also buy the product. So let me review what we have discussed today. Today outsourcing production make or buy product shall we make our own product or shall we buy a product from uh, another company or shall we outsource our production to different companies in different part of the world so all has its own advantage and disadvantages which I have discussed so then strategic alliance with supplier if you are having a mutual uh, benefits in the product or if you are having a benefit so definitely uh, you need to do a strategic alliance with your suppliers for the benefits of your own company then we are having managing a global supply chain so how you manage your supply chain inventory then the role of just in time inventory and also the drawback of just in time uh, in time inventory so that's it for uh, this uh, chapter so we have finished chapter 13 uh, as well